We just looked at solving quadratic equations using the square root property. Now we're going to look at completing the square. And in completing the square, it's all about rewriting our equation so that we can use uh, the square root property. Now, I'm going to take this problem right here. In order to complete the square, you really need this to have you want this to be a 1, and you want this to be an even number. If not, then you may try other methods. So, since that's the case, let me show you the, how we easily do this. You want to put a number here so that this guy will factor, but you want it to factor as the same two factors. Okay. And here's the easy way to do that. Just put the x here and do half of this guy. So half of 10 is plus 5. And what's plus 5 squared? It's a positive 25. So if I just look at it this way, this is a polynomial that factors. And it factors as x plus 5, x plus 5. It's the same two factors, so x plus 5 squared. Now. By putting the plus 25, that allows the left side to factor. But I can't just add 25 to an equation. What I do to one side, I must do to the other side. So now I have x plus 5 quantity squared is equal to 49. And you see that this is just like what we saw in homework number 8, where you'd want to use the square root property. So let's go ahead and do that. By taking the square root of both sides, remembering your plus or minus, you end up with x plus 5 equals plus or minus 7. And you've got to get x by itself. So that's x is equal to negative 5 plus or minus 7. And as I stressed in the other video, if there's nothing radical or imaginary here, you just separate this to get your two answers. So, x is equal to negative 5 plus 7, which equals 2, or x equals negative 5 minus 7, which equals negative 12. So it's quadratic, and we still get the two solutions that we were looking for. So that's how we go about completing the square. So let's see and how we can take those steps and apply it here in number two. Now, number two, this is going to be nice for us because this is a one, and this is even. First thing, you need to move the 53 to the other side. And the reason we move the 53 to the other side is so that we have room to work, and we can actually complete the square over here. So that's a negative 53. Now, I know that I am going to have control here, and I'm going to manip manipulate this equation to do what I want it to do. So to complete the square, just follow these steps. Take half of this guy, that negative 7 goes in the factored form, and the square of this goes here. So the square of negative 7 is 49. Now what I do to one side, I do to the other side. So 49 is the number that completes this guy and allows them to factor as the same factor squared. On the right side, you just do the math. So this is negative 4. Now once you have this, it's just like the stuff we saw with the square root property. So we take the square root of both sides, plus or minus. That means that x minus 7 is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 4 is 2i. And then we move the 7 over to completely get x by itself. So that's a positive 7 plus or minus 2i. Now when you see these solutions right here, things that are imaginary or radical, you're not going to get that from factoring. But if you look at the last example that we did, I got 2 and negative 12. I could get those from factoring. And in fact, if you were to take this original problem right here 
if you were to use the zero factor theorem, you would have x squared plus 10x minus 24 when you set that equal to zero. And this guy factors. He factors as x plus 10 times x minus 2. And you see from this, you get the factor of, or you get the solution x equals negative 12. And from here, x equals positive 2. But this last problem that I did, 7 plus and minus 2i, no matter what you do to this guy, you're never going to be able to factor him. He doesn't factor using real numbers. So it's just one of those things to, to, try, to try out. If your solutions are nice, pretty numbers like the 2 and the negative 12, see if you could have factored it. All right, so let's look here at number 3. In number three, the constant is already on the other side, but this guy is not a one. So we fix that by dividing everything by the coefficient of x squared. And so that gives me the equation x squared plus 3x, leave some space, equals four. Now, I want to complete the square, and I'm not going to be happy about it. Not that I'm always complaining, but I'm going to have to do half of this guy. So half of 3 is 3 over 2, and 3 over 2 squared is 9 fourths. So 9 fourths is the number that completes the square, but I have to do it on both sides, just like, just like I did before. So the left side gives me the factored form. So if you instantly write the factor or the factored form here, Half of 3 goes inside here, and it squares what you add to both sides. So if you do the factoring, factoring at the same time, it makes it pretty easy. Now here I've got to do 4 plus 9 over 4. Well, make that 4 over 1. Get your common denominator. So this is going to be over 4. This is 16 plus 9, and that's 25. So now, when I take the square root of both sides, don't forget the plus or minus, we have that x plus 3 halves is equal to plus or minus 5 over 2. Now, yes, I'm looking at this going, OK, wait, there, I think I've done my math right. There are no radicals remaining. There are no imaginary numbers. I bet I could have factored this at the beginning. I could have, but you know what? Maybe I didn't see that. There are always other ways of solving. So I get, I get negative 3 halves plus or minus 5 halves. So since there's nothing imaginary and there are no radicals, you need to separate this. So the first one, negative 3 halves plus 5 halves equals 2 over 2. That's positive 1. Or the other solution, negative 3 halves minus 5 halves equals negative 8 halves, which is negative 4. Now, what you could have done is, if you had taken what you see here in purple, the x squared plus 3x equals 4, if you had moved the 4 over, you would have had something that would have factored very quickly. But, again, you didn't see it, so, oh well, you'll be all right. Number 4. Well, number 4 already has the constant over here, but it's got the negative here. So I'm going to fix this by dividing everything by negative 1. So that's x squared minus 20x equals negative 91. So I'm going to solve this by completing the square. On the left side here, no, this is going to be a square when it's all said and done. Half of negative 20 is negative 10. Negative 10 squared is a positive 100. So I have to add 100 to both sides here. 
So negative 91 plus 100 is 9. And now I take the square root of both sides using that square root property. Don't forget the plus or minus. So x minus 10 equals plus or minus, and the square root of 9 is just 3. So when I get x by itself, that's positive 10 plus or minus 3. You see, again, I don't have anything radical or imaginary. So I need to separate this. So x is equal to 10 plus 3, which is 13. Or the other solution, x is equal to 10 minus 3, and that equals 7. Again, nice numbers like this tells me that I could have factored this from the very beginning. Um, but you know what? Completing the square works. And so does the next thing that I'm going to show you, which is the quadratic formula. Not that it is always the best thing to use.